In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to make your EV renders look more realistic. So there's a lot of settings in Blender EV that you can change to make the EV render look more realistic. And so I'm going to take this render here and I'm going to turn it into this one here. And as you can see, it does look quite a bit better. And for demonstration, I'll be using this simple little scene here, which I set up in Blender EV. So I've added a variety of objects like this metallic sphere here. And this is very reflective so we can see how the reflection looks. And then we also have this shiny monkey head. And then I also added this object here. So this is like a cylinder light. And I I also have an area light pointing down on the objects and then I also added in an HDRI from polyhaven.com and I added this HDRI into the background world to get some more realistic lighting and reflections so I'm starting off by using all of the default EV settings and this actually doesn't look very realistic especially if you were to compare it to cycles render so I'm going to change this over to cycles render and cycles is much more realistic and so like here in the sphere you can actually see there's lots of realistic lighting and reflections you can see the area Area light and also this light over here and you can see the reflection of the monkey head and also if I take a look at this cone here and you can see there's that blue reflection there on the cone and also right over here you can see there's that bright reflection there on the metal coming from the cylinder light but if I change this back over to blender EV this really doesn't look that realistic even though this is a very bright cylinder light there isn't really any light coming from this and then also right here on the sphere you're not really able to see any reflections you can see the reflection from the HDRI and the area light but you're not even able to see the reflection of the monkey head or the cylinder light or anything like that. So let's go over how we can make this scene more realistic in Blender EV. So the first setting I'm going to turn on is the ambient occlusion. So if you head right over here to the render properties in Blender EV, you can check mark the ambient occlusion. And to show you what the ambient occlusion does, I can zoom right in here to the bottom of the monkey head. And if I uncheck the ambient occlusion, you can see there isn't really any shadow right there where the monkey is touching the ground. But then if I turn on the ambient occlusion, Occlusion, there's that little dark area down there and you can especially see it right here underneath this sphere so if I turn on the ambient occlusion there's that little dark area where the sphere and the ground are touching and so that already does make it look more realistic now if you want to be able to see the ambient occlusion better you can open up the ambient occlusion settings and you can turn up the distance and now you can see there's a much darker area underneath the monkey and if I turn this off you can see the difference and also right here next to the blue cube if I toggle the ambient occlusion on and off you can see it adds that little dark dark area and that definitely makes it look more realistic because it would be darker there kind of behind the area light. So the next thing that I'm going to turn on is the screen space reflections. And this is super helpful for making Eevee look more realistic. Because if the screen space reflections is turned off, right here on the metallic sphere, you can't really see any of these other objects. But if you turn on the screen space reflections, now you can actually see the monkey head right there. And you can also see the cylinder light being reflected in the sphere. So the next setting I'm going to turn on is the bloom here. So the bloom is going to make anything that's very bright have kind of a glare or a glow to it. And now you can see that, that cylinder light has that glare there. Now if you open up the bloom settings, there's definitely a lot of settings you should probably play around with. So there is a radius value, so you can change this to change the size of the glare. And then there also is an intensity. I do want to turn the intensity down a little bit, and then I'm also going to turn the radius down a bit. Because I don't want it to be too strong, but there should just be a little bit of glare, especially on those really bright objects. Now the next setting that I want to change in Blender EV is to add more sampling. Now the biggest reason that you'd want to turn the sampling up is to make the shadows look better. So right here if you look behind the monkey head you can see that there's these shadows here and these shadows are coming from this area light. But you can see that the shadows are very rough and they actually look a bit pixelated. It almost looks like there's just little blocks of shadow and they're not blending together very well. But if I turn the sampling up that's going to smooth out the shadows and make it look much more realistic. So I'm just going to turn the render and viewport to the same number. So I'm going to click and then drag down and then let go. And I'm just going to change this to like 100. Just turn that to like 100. So now you can see those shadows are much more smooth and they're blending together better. And you could turn this up even more if you wanted to. So maybe I'll just change this to like a 300. And now that's going to look even more realistic. So you can see those shadows are much more smooth. Now if you turn up these samples, then it will definitely take longer to render the scene. But I do really think it's worth it because it does make the shadows look a lot nicer. But if you want Eevee to render as fast as possible, then you can just turn up the render samples to just the amount that you need. Now the next setting that I want to change is the 
shadows. So again, right over here on the render properties, you can open up this shadows tab and you can see that the shadows actually have a resolution. So if I wanna make this very high quality, I could just change the cube size and the cascade size both to the max, which is 4K. And that's gonna make the quality look much nicer because you can see if I turn these back down to a very small number, the shadows are blending because we turned up the sampling, but you can see the shadows still are very pixelated. And that is because the resolution here is quite low. So the shadows look kind of smudgy and pixelated. So if I just turn this way up, I could turn it up to the max or I could just turn it up to like 2K, so the 2K resolution. Now you can see the shadow quality of the pixels is much more realistic. I am just gonna go with 4K because I do want it to look really nice. Now the next setting that I wanna change is actually a setting within the area light. So I'm just going to select the area light. You can just select whatever light you're using. And then I'm gonna click right over here to go to the object data properties. And then right here, you can open up the shadow tab. And then I'm going to check mark the contact shadows. So if I kind of zoom in here to the monkey's eye, you can see the effect really well, kind of here where the monkey's eye is. So if I toggle between the contact shadows, you can see there isn't really that shadow underneath the monkey's eye. But if I turn this on, now that looks darker there inside the monkey's eye, and it definitely looks more realistic. All right, so let's head right back over here to the render properties, and I'm going to close this and scroll down, and I'm gonna open up the color management. So on default within the color management, the view transform is set to filmic and the filmic view transform is going to give you better exposure than the standard. But if I compare the colors and the contrast between the filmic and the standard, you can see when I change it over to filmic, it actually looks a bit more grayed out and it's less saturated. But you definitely wanna use the filmic view transform because the exposure is much more realistic. So if this is set to filmic, if you wanna make the colors look nicer, you can click here on the look and you can change this to high contrast or you can use any of these other values. And so this is going to make the lighting a bit more contrasty and it's also going to make the colors a bit more saturated and so that looks a lot nicer. So for this scene I'm just going to go with the high contrast. All right so with all of these settings the scene does look much more realistic but there is one more really important thing you can do to make Eevee look more realistic and that is to bake the lighting using the irradiance volume light probe. So I'm going to press shift A and let's go right down here to light probe and I'm going to add the irradiance volume. So here is the irradiance volume and I'm going to press S to scale and I'm going to scale this object up and I want the smaller cube here to fill the entire scene and so after we set this up we can bake the lighting and everything that's in the smaller cube is going to be baked now the space between the larger cube and the smaller cube is going to be a fall off so the baking is going to have less and less of effect from the smaller cube to the bigger cube and then outside of the bigger cube it's not going to bake any of the lighting so I want to scale this up make it really big you could also also scale it down on the z-axis or just make it fit your scene so I think I'll scale this up on the x-axis and so I want that smaller cube to fit the entire scene and I also want the area light to be inside the irradiance volume so that it bakes the lighting from the area light now if you click right over here to the object data properties you can change some settings of the irradiance volume so there is a distance value and this distance value is going to change the size of the larger cube but the smaller cube is filling the entire space so I really don't need to change the distance value and then there is also the fall off right here which is going to change the size of the smaller cube. Now you can see that there is also an X, Y, and Z resolution and this is going to change the resolution of your baking. So you can see that there are these little dots here and the dots are the resolution. So I'm going to click on the X resolution and then drag down and then I can let go and this way we can change all the values at the same time. And I'm just going to change this to maybe like an 8 and then also I scaled up the irradiance volume on the X axis so I might just turn the X resolution up a little bit more to maybe like a 14. Now the higher the resolution, the longer it will take to bake. So if it is taking too long to bake, you can turn the resolution down. Now to actually bake the lighting, we're gonna go right back over here to the render properties, and then I'm going to open up the indirect lighting right here. And then I can just click on bake indirect lighting. And you can see that there is a progress bar, and so it's going to bake the lighting. So this really isn't taking long for my computer to bake this, so I'll just wait till it is finished. And the baking finished, and it definitely looks more realistic now. Now, I would always recommend baking the lighting right before you render the scene because if for some reason you move the objects around, you can 
see that there is kind of a problem with the bake there. It is a little bit hard to see, but you can see there's kind of like a dark shadow there under the sphere, and that's because I moved the sphere. So if you move the objects around, then you should just rebake the indirect lighting before you render. So here is the rendered image with all of the EV settings set on default, and then here is the rendered image after all the changes. So by toggling between these two images, you can definitely see the improvement. It's much more realistic, the colors look a lot nicer, and because we baked the lighting, this cylinder emission light is actually lighting up the objects. You can especially see right over here on this side of the monkey head, without all these changes, the back of the monkey looks pretty dark, but then after baking the lighting and adding all the other settings, you can see this light is actually lighting up the other objects. And you can also see all those reflections in the shiny metal sphere, so that looks a lot more realistic. And the colors also look better, things look more contrasty, and the colors look more saturated. And we also have that really nice glare there on the cylinder light, which definitely makes it look better. So that is it. That is how you make your EV renders more realistic. And if you'd like to learn how to create a realistic EV glass shader, then I have a different tutorial on how to make a realistic glass shader in Blender EV. I'll have the link in the description and the video right up there in the end screen. And I also have a tutorial on how to use transparency in Blender EV. So if you have maybe a glass object that you want to see through, or you have some other object which is using transparency, then in that tutorial I show you how to set up transparency in Blender EV. So again, link is in the description to that video if you'd like to check it out. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, I'll also have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships, and I do appreciate all of your support. But I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.